Hello! Hey guys! Welcome to Hauntober week three. We are in our college's haunted library. library. It's like midnight Ooh. right now and it's a little spooky. Things have been happening. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> every now and again there's like stories about this thing that knocks over books, breaks light bulbs, rides the elevator randomly. And so we got permission to come do our this um here here in the haunted library so this is what it's we're exciting. doing it's terrifying <laughs> it's terrifying we had monster music playing we did and a little bit ago. it was terror inducing um there were certain parts that were just not okay <laughs> <laughs> everything else is fine and there's a few that pushed us over the edge a little too far yeah, just a bit <laughs> Um, so outside of our Hauntober books, we've been still been reading because we have a problem. Um, so I've been reading The Dark Shore by Kevin Emerson, and that's a, his sequel to The Lost Code in the Atlantean Trilogy. I just started that, and I also started rereading Aragon by Christopher Paolini, because I haven't read that since I was 10. I haven't even read that one yet, so once you're done it's with good. it, I'm gonna, I want to start it's been really reading good. that series and get through it because dragons, it's been my, dude. It's been on my list forever. Ever? Yeah. What are you yeah. reading outside of them? I just finished reading Explicit Captive by Heather Demetrius, which is about genies. And they're in the real world, but they're also not in the real world. So they're kind of like low fantasy genies. Yeah. Because it's also like a real world ish. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, real worlds. There's, there's stuff that happens on Earth as well. Um, but it's, it was really good. Um, it's the beginning of the series, though. <laughs> it ended on a big cliffhanger that I was not okay with. I mean, I was okay with it, but it was just, no. No, 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 So, and I'm also, I just started... And it just came out this week, so... Last week. Last week. This week? No, it was this week, because we saw it in Barnes and Noble Wednesday. Okay, so this, this week. week. And then I also uh, just started Death Sworn by Leah Cypress, which is a, I think it's high fantasy. I believe it's high fantasy, but I'm not. It's got what in it again? I know it's magic and assassins. And that's oh, that's right. Assassins, that's right. So that's all I'm going into it knowing. Yeah. And all right. So last week for Hauntober, we read The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman and The Merciless, The Merciless by Daniel Vega. And so. We have those reviews up online, so yes. go on the blog and check, check those out. out. Everything that we've everything about. Everything we've got. In case we missed anything. <laughs> um, we're going to tell you our favorite scenes. So, do you want to go first? Yeah, my favorite scene in the graveyard book is uh, there's one scene where nobody, the little boy, um, is walking on the graveyard and all of the ghosts are getting ready for something. And he, when he asks them what's happening, they give him weird, like, weird song lyrics that have to do with this thing called the macabre or the back of Ray, or however you pronounce it, and it turns out that it's this weird supernatural thing that happens where the living and the dead come together and they dance this dance called the Macabre Macabre thing. And I think it's Macabre, because it's Macabre. 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 Um, or whatever the fuck that word is. And so the, like, the living and the dead dance together, which is the coolest thing ever. And there's like, and afterwards nobody remembers what happened. They're all like, no, we don't. We don't talk to the living, or the living, or nobody knows what happened, except for that there's all these white flowers everywhere. And it was really, like, the way that he wrote it, Neil Gaiman wrote it, was so beautiful. And, like, it was just, to me, it was like, it felt like one of the happiest parts of the book, yeah. in my opinion. Right. So, my favorite scene of The Merciless was probably, <laughs> okay, so this, this, I've said this before, this book was Mean Girls if they were Satanists. It is extreme, it says, for mature audiences only and it means it yeah. so probably my favorite scene is really bad it's they're trying to exercise this girl because they're convinced she's a demon and the main character just thinks that she's been locked in this house with these crazies and she's like how am i gonna get this poor girl and i out of here because these people have gone insane mm -hmm. um and so she tries to get them out, but then they are still more convinced that she's a demon. And so the main, the main, I guess, pop, she's the main popular girl, lays out this girl 
and takes a nail gun to her and crucifies her on the ground. And it's just like, oh, what? nail gun through the hands. Uh, and you're just like, oh. This is why I didn't read this book. I think and I then the it. house gets on fire and the main character has to rip the nails oh, out with her mouth because she's tied up. And it's just grody at its like best. It's like the height, climax of everything. Is a really good I remember scene. you telling me, but you've like put the book down. I was like, this is happening right now. <laughs> it was insane. I was like, what yes. is going on? Um, I also, though, read the Graveyard Book graphic novel adaptation, which also has a review up on our actual blog. And so. It's the first one. So there's. It, it only goes to the dance. It goes to, okay, so there's two then. So that's because that's about halfway through the book. There's two graphic novels. I think the second one is out. Yeah, I mean, think. I haven't think. seen it anywhere, though. Anyway, um, but it was really good. I enjoyed it. Uh, the art style was very gothic. Mm -hmm. um, and then also that your favorite scene, I can, I was like, well, like, how they drew it was interesting because you could tell he was very confused why no one would talk to him about it yeah he was just like he would go to his parents and they were like oh yeah like we have a really busy day today and they kicked him out and they kicked him out and he was just like okay and like, the other ghosts wouldn't talk to him they were just singing the song the yeah. cabaret song and then you find out like why what happened and you're just like and the dancing was really cool it's like, so cute because flowers. he dances with everyone in the with the um, witch and he dances with the, the gray white, lady the gray the white lady white gray lady, lady something what gray lady She's on the gray horse. She's on the gray horse. Um, and she is kind of like she's kind of like death. She's, she's like so a reaper pretty. From I like that they made her pretty. Yeah. And she's like, and he's like, I want to ride the horse. And she's like, someday. One day Everybody. we all do. Yeah. And you're like, oh. It's anyway, cute. it's cute. I recommend both the graphic yeah. novel and the novel. It's definitely one of those books that you learn something while still being entertained. It's definitely yeah. like nobody is like he's so cute. The perfect protagonist to to teach you lessons about life but it's in a graveyard and it's and weird like this part like where you're ghosts. like this is definitely creepy but at the same time it's like it never kicks you over to that like okay this is too much yeah and he's always like i'm not afraid of death everyone i live yeah, with is dead. dead it's so weird yeah yeah so that's that yeah so it's very so they were very different yet very similar so okay so this is the third week of hauntober um Zoe is I going to read. I am reading Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge, and I'm really excited about it's it. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be super exciting. And I'm reading Asylum by Madeline Rue, which is so far really good. It's kind of. Is it kind of Miss Peregrine? It is kind of Miss Peregrine. But at the same, same time, it's kind of like it's in <laughs> Jesus Christ! Mystery man. Oh, it's Nor! It's Nor! Alright. So, as you saw. As you saw. We were just scared out of, of our minds by Norman Partridge, the author of Dark Harvest, which, as you know, is one of Zoe's reads for October. Say hello to the people. <laughs> Eloquent. Alright, we have a few questions for him, and he's gonna. Yeah, a few <laughs> share some of his wisdom, wisdom and love and of tips and about whatever things tips about things yeah and stuff stuff <laughs> so first thing if you do encounter a zombie in a haunted library you want salt you put salt on his tongue he's done for this doesn't work with post-apocalyptic zombies it does work with haitian zombies if i'm remembering that uh, correctly if you can but get close enough to if that. you can get close enough or maybe <laughs> Put salt on a limb and put it out there, and maybe they'll go for it. <laughs> if you don't mind losing the That's limb, a big right. gamble. Oh. <laughs> but that was a new fact. We did not know I, about that. Know that one. Right. Do you want us to start with the questions? Or yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So our first question was: Is what was the hardest scene in Dark Harvest for you to write? In a way, it was all hard to write, just because uh, the way I wanted to 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 Right Dark Harvest was basically like a campfire story. So I'm addressing the reader the whole way through. Yeah. So it's an omniscient narrator 
and uh, plus I wanted that oral tradition kind of feel. So I always say it's the longest campfire story you'll, you'll ever hear, <laughs> but I couldn't really drop out of character doing that. I had a few little sections where I changed it up a little bit uh, because the story required that. But uh, in a way, I felt like, oh, I'm writing a 40,000 word prose poem sometime. So that, and as far as the scenes go, I don't want to uh, give a spoiler, but uh, later on in the book, uh, there's a scene in the church. And basically, the way the novel's set up, there's this character, uh, the October Boy. There's this town that's closed off. Every year, they have a ritual called the and what happens in the run is this creature comes out of the cornfields, a uh, pumpkin-headed thing, carrying a butcher knife. <laughs> if everybody, if, if this creature gets to the church in the middle of town before midnight, it wins. If one of the kids who's locked up for five days and starved before the run begins uh, brings down the October boy, that kid is the only person who will get out of town that year. So in a way, it's a little bit Shirley Jackson's mm -hmm. The Lottery, which a lot of people have compared it to, and I certainly grew up reading that and being, and being a very strong influence, and in a little bit of a way, it's a Halloween story, too. Yeah. So, but the hardest scene comes later on, where the October boy actually makes it to the church and uh, confronts something else. I love that scene. Yes. I've read The Dark Harvest before, and there's a re review of it on our blog from about this time last year, I think is when you yeah, gave it to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so good. I love oh, that book. You. You're welcome. All right. Um, do you want to say the second question? Yeah. So our, the second question, um, what was like the initial spark that inspired you to start writing Dark Harvest? Well, when I started writing it, what I was going to do was I was going to write a Halloween story for my wife. Because oh, we exchange so we exchange Halloween presents every year. That's so cool. She writes she writes she's a writer and, and she writes horror sometimes too. But other times she writes other things. But I thought, wouldn't it be great on Halloween Day to give her this story and surprise her? Well, I wrote the first scene and I thought, wow, I'm never going to be able to finish this in time. <laughs> and then I, and somewhere in there I realized, no, this is this is going to be a longer thing. I. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a novel or a novella at that point, uh, but once I decided on the voice and how the voice was going to work, I felt like, okay, this needs to be a novella. This needs to be a short, compact kind of story. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I aimed at that. But that's but originally it was just going to be a little present for my wife. Mm -hmm. And then once I got engaged in it, I thought, uh, okay, if this is going to be the Halloween thing I do, I'm going to go full at it. Yeah. It's going to be the best Halloween story. So cool. As we geek out. <laughs> All right. Um, and I geeked out on plenty of things. I mean, you guys talk about that. But, you know, when I was putting my hallmarks up for Halloween stories, uh, I've got a huge library of that stuff. I, you know, as a kid, I was a big fan of Ray Bradbury and oh, yeah. his voice. Definitely. Uh, especially his, not so much his science fiction, but his horror. His horror. Uh, something Wicked This Way Comes. I've had that recommended to me so many times. It's an amazing book. And as you find out, you know, it's with Bradbury, he's one of a kind. And that's what I've always loved. Guys like Bradbury, guys like Charles Beaumont and Richard Matheson who wrote for The Twilight Zone. These, these, <gasps> were, these were guys who had original voices and a certain way of seeing things. And uh, it just spoke to me. So those were the guys I geek out about and still do. Nice. So our last question is, why do you write horror? I guess you kind of answered that with you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, I guess if uh, another way to say it is uh, I'd rather write about a guy who gets his soul stolen than a guy who gets his wallet stolen. There you uh, go. I just kind of like to play on a Long bigger stage. <laughs> Need a point to There you go. <laughs> or, you know, let's make t-shirts. But uh, I kind of like a, you know, it's not, I won't say brighter colors, maybe darker colors. But I've always loved that operatic kind of thing. I love all different kinds of genre fiction and have a certain kind of a pulp sensibility. Um, I'm really influenced by movies too, like uh, when I was a young guy, uh, 
a lot of the action movies really kind of set the tone for the way I write. So I'm just as much as influenced by Rod Serling as I am by Sam Peckinpah, who did these kind of hyper-violent movies in the 70s, like That's The Wild funny. Bunch. So it's, I always say that uh, being a writer is kind of like being the Frankenstein monster, because we all have these influences that come from different places, but hopefully when that creativity puts the spark to you, and you get up and walk around and do your own stuff, it's, it's a little bit different, a mm -hmm. little bit different than the sum of your parts, so. Take a bumper sticker. There you go. <laughs> All right, may we ask that you read a little bit from Dark Harvest? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read the opening. And, uh. Here. Airplane mode? Here we go. Please keep your hands and your arms inside the vehicle at all times. <laughs> Will do. Before I read the beginning of Dark Harvest, I want to give Ooh. my recommendation. Oh. And that would be Afterlife with Archie. Now, when I was a kid, I can't say that I ever bought an Archie comic book off the stands, and I can't imagine what would have brought me to buy an Archie com comic book off the stands. Uh, I was a complete Marvel kid, bought those, bought Creepy and Eerie and all those horror comics, too. This takes Archie over the fence into something else, it's a, it's a great story. It's not going to be what you expect at all. And I was just really impressed and blown away. I can't wait to read more. So that's my recommendation. Read it and you'll have fun. Same people who make um, Afterlife with Archie are also redoing Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And so I can't, I can't even remember the name of it. The uh, Chilling Tales of Sabrina, I think it's that. called. And the first um, issue of that comes out this month. OK. So here we go. A Midwestern town, you know its name. You were born there. It's Halloween 1963 and getting on towards dark. Things are the same as they've always been. There's the main street, the old brick church in the town square, the movie theater, this year with the Vincent Price double bill. And past all that is the road that leads out of town. It's black as a licorice whip under an October sky. Black is the night that's coming and the long winter nights that will follow. Black is the little town it leaves behind. The road grows narrow as it hits the outskirts. It does not meander. Like a planned path of escape, it cleaves a sea of quarter sections planted thick with summer corn. But it's not summer anymore. Like I said, it's Halloween. All that corn has been picked, shucked, eaten. All those stalks are dead withered dry. In most places, those stocks would have been plowed under long ago. That's not the way it works around here. You remember, corn's harvested by hands in these parts. Boys who live in this town spend their summers doing the job under a blazing sun that barely bothers to go down. And once those boys are tanned straight through and that crop's picked, those corn stalks die rooted in the ground. They're not plowed under until the first day of November. Until then, the silent rows are home to things that don't mind living among the dead. Rats, snakes, frogs, creatures that will take flight before the first light of the coming morning or die beneath a circular blade that scores both earth and flesh without discrimination. Yeah, that's the way it works around here. There are things living in these fields tonight that will, by rights, be dead by tomorrow morning. One of them hangs on a splintery pole, its roots burrowing deep in rich black soil. Green vines climb through tattered clothes nailed to the pole in its cross piece. They twist through the legs of worn jeans like tendons, twine like a cripple's spine through a tattered denim jacket. Rounded leaves take sucker from those vines like organs fed by blood vessels, and from the hearts of those leaves green tendrils sprout and the leaves and the vines and the tendrils fill up that coat and the arms that come with it. A thicker vine creeps through the neck of that jacket, following the last few inches of splintery pole like a backbone, widening into a rough stem that roots in the thing balanced on the pole's flat crown. That thing is heavy, heavy and orange and ripe. That thing is a pumpkin. The afternoon sun lingers on the pumpkin's face and then the afternoon sun is gone. 
Quiet hangs in the cornfield. No breeze wrestles the dead stalks. No wind wrestles the tattered clothes of the thing hanging from the pole. The licorice whip road is empty, silent, still. No cars coming into town. No cars leaving. It's that way for a long time. Then darkness falls. The car comes. The door slams. The footsteps in the cornfield. The sound of a man shouldering through brittle stalks. The butcher knife that fills his hand gleams beneath the rising moon, and then the blade goes black as the man bends low. Twisted vines and young creepers root at the base of the pole. The man's sharp blade severs all. Next he goes to work with a claw hammer. Rusty nails grunt loose from old wood. A tattered leg slips free, then another, and then a tattered arm. The thing they call the October boy drops to the ground. <laughs> That's so cool. That was That's scary. <laughs> Watch out. There you go. Let me know I'm how you like so it. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what I like to hear. I'm going to cry a lot. I'm going <laughs> to cry. It's going to be okay. Well, thank you so much yeah. for doing thank this you. with us. Thank you. It's been fun. Do you want to sit while we do our last little bit, or do you want to go off the screen? I'm going to wander over there and listen to you guys. All right. <laughs> and remember, Archie. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, there All right. So that was Norman Partridge, our... Amazing friend, amazing writer. Um, Super detailed writing. I you love it like so much. Lot. It's very, like, you see it in your head, like, totally everything. I forgot how much I loved that line that black is, the li is black licorice until yeah. I was reading it. And I was like, oh, that's right, that's one of my favorite lines. Um, okay, so we're almost done with our video. I'm sorry that it's been a bit longer because we had our little <laughs> spectacular over here. Um, we're going to tell you some other Halloween reads. Do you want to just go back and forth on the list? Yeah, sure. Uh, the, f the first one, and I'm actually probably going to pick up hopefully in the next few weeks, is yes. Conversion by Catherine Howe, which is about uh, Salem, the Salem Witch Trials, as well as a parallel in present day where um, there's a bunch of girls in a school that start having weird illnesses, and it kind of parallels the witch trials and kind of a main character figuring out exactly what's happening and how to stop yeah. it before it turns That's into so another cool. trial. Yeah. All right. The second book is Anna Dressed in Blood, Blood by, oh gosh, Kendari Blake. I don't know what that's about, but that's ghost okay. Ghost killer? I guess. Yeah, killer ghost. Oh, there you go. He hunts ghosts. Kind of like she kills Hilsing, but not. Kind of, yeah. I haven't read it, but I've uh, seen it. I've read a lot of other stuff by a lot of I've read one other book by Kendari Blake, um, and it was really good, so hopefully that one's good too. Well, probably. Uh, the next book is called The Fall by Bethany Griffin, and that is a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher sure. by Edgar right. Poe. We were so excited, and I totally forgot about it. Now. I heard it's terrifying. <laughs> Alright, and then the next one is The Mad Men's Daughter by Megan Shepard, which I have read and reviewed, as well as its sequel, and I am in love with it. It is a reimagining of, oh goodness, Dr. Moreau's Island, is that the book? The Island of the Dr. Dr. Moreau. Doctor, it's Dr. Moreau's daughter. Um, and then the second one is a reimagining of Jack the Ripper. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then the third one comes out this year, and it's a reimagining re of Frankenstein. And so, I'm really excited. And the last book is called Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea by April Genevieve Tuchol. Which has gotten a lot of um, It's gotten a lot of press recently. Yeah. Um, and in, I think it's, it's, I know it's about the devil. And Not he, really. I think he moves, it's like this girl and um, he moves in next door and he's the devil. But he's a really hot, young That's kind of like that anime, the, um, the devil is a part-time part-timer. Part -timer. <laughs> yeah. It's Time. an anime about the devil working at McDonald's. <laughs> Isn't it Whack Donald's? It is Whack Donald's. <laughs> oh god. So those are a few of our recommendations. There are many more, um, as well as anything else by Norman Partridge. Yeah. Uh, yes. Alright, so we have news about life. Bookie things. Bookie things. 
We, not this weekend, but the next weekend, are going to take a road trip up to Portland, Oregon to basically go to a bookstore. We are going to drive 10 hours to go to, to, go to a bookstore. And get great coffee, but it's going <laughs> to We're going to go to Powell's Books in Portland, Oregon, and probably live there for two days. Probably. Um, get some merchandise. We'll do a book haul after. Yeah. We're also going to do a little vlog. Hopefully, I'll get some of us, on the way there. Probably of us singing horribly long to the radio on the yeah, way up. And, <laughs> and on the way down. Yeah, on the way back. Um, we'll show you a bit of Portland. I don't know what else we're going to do. We probably won't do anything else. We'll probably right. fall in love with Pals and be like, oh, I'm sure who cares like, about the rest of this city? It's like four stories tall, so. It's going to take, it would take us a week to get through that. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got to cram it all into two, two days, days. Though, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll see. So you'll good. look forward to that, and then it'll be, that'll be for our last week, and then we're going to start our Harry Potter reread. Yeah. Oh, my so, gosh. I. Hunter Over has gone by so fast. I love the Harry Potter Thing. And now I'm really excited about it though. I know, I haven't read through the full series in years. I used to pick up random books just go. and open to a random page and start reading because I'd read them so many times and I was like, oh, I like this part, and then I'd just start reading. I've never experienced rereading Harry Potter before. I was oh, like, really? it's like going back, and I'm like, I've experienced reading it. I want to experience rereading it. <laughs> it's and I feel like it's, it's kind of a trip because you super already nerd. know everything, and you're like, you pick up on things that you're like, wait, this is three books later. I feel like I'm going to cry even harder at the last one. And then, Probably. So, yeah, tell us what you're reading. Tell us how your Halloween goes. Yeah, tell us your scary books that you think we should read before October is over. Yes. Check out Norman Partridge's blog. We're going to do a link down there Description. for you. As well as to any reviews I mentioned. And... Yeah. Oh my goodness, what else do we, our book depository links will go down there. Uh, put the Powell's link we'll down put there Powell's too so you can check there. it out. You can also, you can order a ton of stuff online there and they'll ship it to you. Yeah, so. they're cool. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. That's it.